Hey, Chris Ferdinandi, the Vanilla JS guy here. Um, and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Over the weekend, I found this article from Ari Stothanopoulos. Uh, it's from 2019, so it's about four, three and a half years old now. Um, but in it, they talk about their process of migrating from jQuery to vanilla JavaScript. And they have some jQuery code in here. Um, and they have a whole process that they went through for converting that into vanilla JavaScript. What I thought might be interesting to do today is to take this same code and show how I would approach it. And I'm going to drop a link to Ari's article down in the description or the doobly-doo, as uh, YouTubers love to say. Um, but um, if uh, so, if you want to go see how Ari approached this, you can. Uh, but I'm also going to be walking through my approach to this. Um, because a handful of things have changed since 2019. Um, there's some things Ari did that I would maybe do a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, uh, with that said, let's dig in. Um, just real quick before we get started, if this kind of thing sounds interesting to you and you'd like to learn how to do more of it, um, I have a whole series of short focused books and courses uh, that teach you how to do this exact thing over at vanillajsguides.com. Um, in particular, the fundamentals bundle, um, which includes guides on DOM manipulation, working with arrays and objects, things like that, um, covers uh, most of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. Uh, if you're someone who likes to do more project-focused work um, and you like to learn by doing, you might also enjoy my Vanilla JS Academy, where you follow a structured learning path and learn by just working on a ton of projects with a lot of support. Um, and just real quick note on that, I actually have early bird registration for the next session of those workshops running right now. Uh, so if you head over to vanillajsacademy.com and use the code earlybird at checkout, you can get 40% off your registration, which is pretty flippin' sweet. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, let's actually jump into the project here. Um, I have a uh, demo pulled up and ready. I'm going to drop the source code for this down in the description. Uh, but I literally just copy and pasted the code from Ari's article, uh, dropped it in here, pulled in jQuery, uh, and I've got it running and working. And so what's happening here is jQuery is waiting for the document to finish loading. It is grabbing uh, the item in the DOM that has the ID menu on it. And then it's searching within that element for any list item that has the item class on it. It's adding the class foo, removing the class bar, changing the background color, and uh, changing the color to Rebecca Purple and FFF, respectively. Uh, and just so you can see what happens if we don't have this on, I'll comment it out and reload. And we just get this generic set of list items here, and these things that are supposed to be hidden are visible. Um, so, uh, let's actually, let's do this. I'm going to keep it commented out, um, but I'm going to comment it in a way that makes it a little bit easier to copy paste stuff and read. Um, so we're going to start working through this. So one of the first things that Ari did in their article that I am not going to do is recreate jQuery's document ready feature, um, with vanilla JavaScript. The reality is you don't need it. If you load your code in the footer, um, there's basically no need to actually do this. Just load your code and you're off to the races. Uh, so I'm going to skip this entirely. Um, I am going to get the menu, um, which we can do very easily with a uh, document query selector. Um, so let's say let menu equal document query selector, and I'm going to pass in menu. Many years ago, uh, people were really obsessed with the fact that you'd want to use get element ID for this because you're getting an element by an ID and get element by ID is so much more performant than query selector. The reality is um, that just doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> get element by ID is faster, definitely, but query selector is still absurdly fast. It can do thousands and thousands of operations a millisecond. Um, which means unless you're loading like millions of items into the page and trying to get them, there's no real performance benefit uh, to using one over the other. So I like to just use query selector and query selector all because I think um, uh, it's easier to just muscle memory those. Um, and that's what I recommend to my students. 
So uh, let's go ahead and I'm actually going to comment this. The original code isn't commented, but let's do that. So let's um, get the menu element from the DOM. And then we're going to cache that to this menu variable here. Uh, and uh, then it's, um, it's getting all of the items inside that menu um, and looping through them and doing a bunch of stuff. Um, so uh, we can... We can do this a little bit differently here, but that's okay. So we're going to, um, let's say, loop through each uh, list item in the menu. Um, so there was a time where I really liked to convert node lists into arrays and use the array for each method. And then eventually I started using the node list for each method when that got proper support. These days I really love a for of loop unless you need the index for the item. And in this case, we don't. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for, um, uh, we will let um, item of, and uh, I could, well, actually, yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna cache it, right? So I'm gonna say let items equals, and then the query selector method and query selector all method don't have to be run on the document. They can be run on any element. So I can search inside the menu. I can say query selector all. And then uh, they're looking for li item. Um, with our HTML, uh, that seems like a little overkill, but just in case there's some other random item that happens to have uh, that class on it. Also, one of the things this is doing, uh, it's adding this foo class and removing bar. And I don't have any items with bar on it, so let's go ahead and add those in. Uh, just so we're a little bit more consistent here, um, but so we want to uh, we want to get all of the list items inside our menu that have that class on them, and uh, we can actually just so you can see this, we'll we'll go ahead and log that to the console. Uh, so here now I've got this node list with my four my four items on it. So now we can use a for of loop to loop through those. So I'm going to say, uh, let item of items. And what this is doing is it's going to loop through my items node list. Uh, you can use this with any iterable, so it'll also work with um, form fields and um, it won't work with objects, but it'll work with arrays. Um, and uh, it's going to assign each item as it loops through it to whatever variable you have defined here. Uh, in this case, item. Uh, and now I can do all of these operations on that item. So I can say um, item class list add foo item class list remove bar item style uh, background color equals Rebecca purple. Um, I should be copy pasting this. I'm, uh, typing it out like an idiot um uh item style color equals fff um and if i were to run this our hidden items will still be visible but all the other styling stuff should kick in bam awesome uh and now let's go ahead and do this last little part here uh we want to get the hidden items and then hide them uh and so for this uh we are going to let's say loop through uh, each hidden class and actually hide it. Um, so I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Display none is kind of outdated. Uh, I really like the browser native hidden attribute uh, at this point. Uh, but so we are going to, um, uh, we're gonna do something similar, right? So we're gonna say let hidden equal docu, uh, no, not document, I'm sorry, menu, menu, Query selector all, um, and then we're going to look for hidden, and then we are going to again uh, use a for of. So let's say um, let item of hidden, and then I'm going to say item set attribute, and I'm going to add the hidden attribute to that item. With the set attribute method, the second argument, the first item is the uh, or argument is the attribute you want to add. The second argument is its value. That second argument is always required. Um, so we're going to pass that in as an empty string. And 
Now, same thing. We've got our menus coded. Uh, everything's hidden. If I jump over here and look at these items, um, we've got each one of them has that foo class on it. Bar is gone. We've got our inline styles there. Um, you can see the browser is converting our um, uh, our white into an RGB value because that's what they do uh, behind the scenes now. Um, but uh, we've got the same thing going as our jQuery code. And you can see this is definitely more verbose than, um, than what they do with jQuery. Um, but uh, uh, we're cutting out the entirety of the jQuery library to write about the same number of lines of code, just written a little bit more verbosely. Um, so uh, that's it for today's video. If you want to learn how to do more stuff like this yourself, um, two really great resources I have for you. The first is my Vanilla JS Pocket Guides. These are short, focused courses and eBooks made for beginners. Um, I highly recommend either the Fundamentals Bundle or the Complete Set if you're just getting started out. They'll save you 40% or more on buying them individually. And they're going to cover all of the stuff that I talked about in today's video and more. Um, also, if you're someone who really likes learning through projects and you want a little bit more um, hands-on work, you want a lot of support, you want some accountability, I cannot recommend my Vanilla JS Academy workshops enough. Um, and today through Monday, you can actually get 40% off registration on the next session that's starting at the end of the month. Um, and there are several different workshops that I'm running. Uh, if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, you want to select the Vanilla JS Essentials workshop. And then once you've gone through that, you can take a look at some of my others, Structure and Scale and Web Apps. So anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever new videos come up. And I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you could share this video with someone else that you think might enjoy it. I'll see you next time. Cheers.